the companies that don't have or where soon get a data strategy, they will not be here tomorrow. And I think most companies need to understand this. So to start working with the data is not something that could be done as a proof of concept. And uh, where, where you see where, where data science take or AI take you. Uh, to be a data-driven company, that is a whole strategy. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Ingatika interview series. I'm your host Anshti Kaur and today we have Frederick Hofflander, CTO at Edged on the show. We're really excited to have you join us. Welcome Frederick. Thank you. Thank you. Really glad to be here. So before we get started, let me brief you a bit about Ingatika. So the Ingatika interview series is a powerhouse of insights from industry experts and influencers from around the world a platform that provides latest news on AI automation technologies that will help you grow your business. Come be a part of our community, learn, share, and grow with us. So Frederick, I have a couple of questions for you. So artificial intelligence is already here. So how is it impacting our uh, daily life? Yeah, it's present in our daily lives. Uh, so, for example, uh, many businesses yeah, now use AI-powered chatbots to commun communicate with the customers. So, for example, these chatbots can answer questions like yeah, and, and provide customer service and, and support, that he, I mean, even sell products. So, in, additionally, AI is being used to create more personalized experience for customers. Uh, but by analyzing data about customers' behavior, business can also use AI to recommend products or services that the customer is more likely to be interested in. And finally, uh, AI is also being used to automate tasks within business. So this could be include like data entry, scheduling appointments, and even managing finances. But however, I mean, these example, uh, those are from everyday AI and are more of the kind of evolutionary technologies and, and are all parts of a more general digitalization that happens in all companies, I would say. And I wouldn't call any of these like disruptive technologies uh, that will divide in companies in, in like winners and, and losers. But if we look at AI more as a force that will have a more I think there are three important things within the business uh, where the impact of AI differs from other digital technologies and earlier technologies. So first, uh, when scaling an AI system, it's not necessarily needed to, to scale the number of employees, which has been the case in automation before. I mean, even if a machine in the past could replace many humans, um, scale in the company still mean that you need more employees, even if you have that machine. And But if you do right with AI, this is not a strict law anymore. Uh, the se second thing is that AI changes both the operational model, since we can lower the amount of human interaction, uh, and also the business model, since we can predict behavior, uh, pricing, uh, and so on, which make it possible to change from selling things to actually selling needs. Um, and the third thing, um, that is that AI lives on data and not human resources. Uh, and this means that if a company builds a product based on a good AI, uh, not only will that company have a lead from the beginning, but it will also be able to accelerate faster than any competitors since it will get all the data from the users. And that may make it impossible to compete with. So due to these three factors, uh, we see that AI has and will have a more disruptive impact on business. Um, and up until now, startups, for example, have been able to compete with enterprises since they could be more innovative and especially more fast-footed. Um, but what we are starting to see in some sectors today is that some of these giants actually are the fast-footed ones. So we can take Amazon, for example. Uh, 
the reason why they can deliver on an online ordering hours or, or minutes in some cases is that they have so much data. So they can predict what, when, and where an order would come. And a smaller startup wouldn't be able to, to do that. And we, we can also take Google search because that's, I think it's a really good example because they have competitors even from other enterprises. And the reason why Google has the best search engine, it's not since it's not competitors kind of come up with a good algorithm or so, but it's all about the amount of data they are collecting from their users uh, who Google have since they have the best search engine. And they, they have started a virtuous circle here. So, so they, they have cemented their, their position there. So I would say that there are many examples where large companies cement them the market position and not through economies of scale as in the past, but through advantage in data scale, which makes them even more impregnable. So yeah, I, I think long, 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 long uh, answer to the question, but, but I think those are the main parts there probably. Right. So talking about that, we have some constructive ways and some destructive ways, right, in the industry. So like why and exactly how should the companies uh, approach AI when they are in business? Um, I think the most important part when approaching AI uh, is actually to ignore that you are approaching AI and that it is AI you are working with. So uh, many organizations actually make the mistake of deciding they want to do something with AI just because it's AI and they heard it's cool, they heard it's important, and uh, they heard it's a disruptive technology that they just must have. Um, or uh, you can have, have accumulated a large amount of data that they think that you can certainly create some value with, and you have also heard that companies like should be data-driven. And of course, uh, uh, I don't mean that any of these assumptions are wrong uh, because they, it's totally correct. But, but I would also argue that the approach is often in, ineffective and at, at worst harmful for the company. So running a business on just technology uh, that has historically proven to be a really bad idea and it continues to be even with AI. Uh, however, uh, this doesn't mean what we, that we just can continue on the same track as we've always done. So um, to approach AI, you first need to understand what AI is. Um, perhaps not so much in the form of like philosophically question like what is AI, but more in the form of um, how can I understand what AI is in a way that give me a business benefit. Um, and I usually like to demystify AI by instead looking at the technology, te technology as a more of a prediction machine. Uh, this means like the name, a machine that can let you see into the future. Um, and I mean, what company wouldn't benefit from looking into the future? Um, and if we look at AI in this way, uh, then we can ask ourselves the, the really powerful question, uh, if we only knew, then we could. And you have to fill in the blanks there. Um, the cool thing with this question is that you can have entire workshops around it. I have, have had that and it's really helpful for a business to think about how should we use AI in a business friendly way. And the outcome of these workshops using this sentence, if we only knew, then we could. Um, the outcome is a prioritized list of activi activities uh, within the AI that will create actual benefit for the business. And of course, when you have this list, uh, it's just, you just need to start working. Right. 
so to drive uh, business growth in ai what are like what is the path to drive the business growth yeah i i mean at the end of the day there are basically two ways to evolve your business uh, you can either increase sales uh, or reduce cost so and i also believe that reducing cost should be done mainly to actually enable increased sales like uh, lower the prices or, or uh, increase quality by being able to, to do further investments. So, but if we want to use AI to grow our business, um, we have some low hanging fruits to start with. So we can, for example, start by automating repetitive tasks, which frees up and place time so that we can have more focus on strategic tasks. Um, we can take an example, one, one, one task that has come a long way and that actually eats a lot of manpower is customer service. Um, yeah, of course, we should never lower the quality of customer experience, which a lot of companies unfortunately uh, have achieved by using new immature technologies. But there are actually a lot of AI tools to use, for example, automatic response to common questions and smart sorting of, of emails, for example, so that the tasks come to the right person and so on. Um, however, everything that handles the reduction of costs using AI, that is just like scratching the surface compared to real impact that AI can have on increased long-term income. So um, more and more companies, they, they have realized that turning from a product company where you sell um, a one-time product and sometimes make money on maintenance, uh, support, and so on. Um, to, to change that to become a service company where you solve your customer's problem, uh, that will not only give you recurrent revenue, but it also give you a more satisfied customer, which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, so it's also here where AI make all the difference. When you focus on your customer's problem and not your product, data will actually be your fuel. So the more you understand your customer, the better that your product will provide. And which means that you will have a more loyal customers. And this starts, uh, uh, I mentioned it before, but a virtuous circle and that will become your, your your company will become impregnable uh, to your competitors right so apart from forcing into the future and getting loyal uh, loyal customers how can ai improve business in the coming years um yeah i, I think there are two ways forward here uh, mm -hmm. the, the first one is rational and the more the, the other one is more like random um, so I believe that there are absolutely enough AI technologies available today for most companies to evolve or even revolutionize their operational and business model. So, and to do this, I mean, no major research in AI is actually needed. So we, we can use it. If we are starting to use what is out there, uh, Rationally, I think this will absolutely have the biggest impact on business in uh, the coming years. But however, um, I mean, even re AI research and development, um, they, they have this evolving uh, transformation, but of course, also we have the revolutionary transformation that is happening within AI research. So looking at really cutting edge AI, like OpenAI's DALI, uh, ChatGPT, which is new, but everyone knows about, um, and or its competitors. Uh, the only thing we can really be sure of is that we have no idea where AI can take us. Um, so I think a good strategy forward is like, as always, to work with what you have and make sure to be on top of, of your game with the tools given. But you should always look ahead to see what the next big thing, revolutionary big thing is, and understand if that will change um, 
the gameplay for your company uh, domain or, or the whole market. Um, but of course, I mean, this will differ from company to company. So, so I'm usually quite careful with giving general tips for, for all companies. But my best tip is to, to if you don't have the in-house capability, get a really good partner to understand because things will happen and it will happen fast. Right. So that was insightful. So are there any other sound bites you'd like to share with our audience? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, AI and data science and, and advanced analytics or whatever you want to call it, um, it has come in a far way and it's obviously here to stay. So the companies that don't have or were soon get a data strategy, they will not be here tomorrow. And I think most companies need to understand this. So to start working with the data is not something that could be done as a proof of concept. And uh, where, where you see where, where data science take or AI take you. Uh, to be a data-driven company, that is a whole strategy that needs attention and it needs attention from the highest management and, and it needs resources and it absolutely needs its own budget. So it needs to be a strategy and you need to go broad. So actually start by deciding on 10 or 20 activities that you will start with. Uh, some of these will fail. So it's important to not stop your journey at the when something fails. So if you start with just, if you decide to start like with one, two, three things, the risk is that all of them will fail and you will not get more budget to, to, to continue AI work. And in the long run, this will actually hurt the company really fairly. So companies born with this thinking will not have to invest especially for this, but, but it's really good for, for older, more mature companies to realize that this will actually cost serious money, uh, but it will also be the best spent money with the shortest return on investment that you, you have ever seen. So yeah, start working and understand that this is needed. That was great. So thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights with us. For more content, subscribe to Engati and tap the bell icon to access to exclusive content from thought leaders from around the globe. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you with new experts soon. Thank you.